Welcome to Nevertheless Podcast with Bidemi Makmodi, a show dedicated to organic leaders and leaderpreneurs. Today, you would learn how to discover your essence and live more powerfully. Hi, it's week three of the Nevertheless show on the series Artificial Alpha Intelligence Fusion. And we're talking all things artificial intelligence within the context of people of faith. How do we view artificial intelligence and what should we do or not do with it? Last week, we looked at the rules of engagement and we talked about the filters through which we should put our deployment of artificial intelligence. And that's because in the first week, we had identified and agreed that it is the deployment that will determine whether it is good or evil. Mm -hmm. And it is never about the technology itself. Today, I want us to look at the genius of God and AI. Is AI higher than God in ranking or what exactly is it? Is, 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 the, is the modality through which or the, the framework with which we, with, uh, within which um, this intelligence has come to us? Of course, I still have in the studio with me, Coach Anna McCoy, mm -hmm. and then um, we're talking all things AI. Yeah. I'm sounding really smart, maybe, <laughs> but that's because I'm, I'm parroting most of the things she's taught me in the last um, couple of, um, almost two weeks that she's yes, been yes. at my home. But here's the point that um, is important that we make. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, mm -hmm. The Godhead said, God said to the Godhead, come, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. So when Jesus came and walked this earth, Jesus said that as he is, so we are. Mm -hmm. So there is something, and Paul echoed it as well. Mm -hmm. There's something, um, actually, Jesus actually said that greater things will we do mm -hmm. than he had done because he goes back to be with his father, mm -hmm. which for me lays the background or lays the ground for the fact that the journey of establishing ourselves and deploying artificial intelligence is not um, a journey that started today. Like I told us last week, um, everything that manifests in the earth does so because the Lord gave it a nod. Mm -hmm. Now, if I came back to Genesis 1.26, God created us in his image mm -hmm. and after his likeness. Mm -hmm. One of the most profound parts of God is the genius of God. Mm -hmm. That God is so genius that he knows the end of a thing from the beginning. He's so genius that he caused things into being. There is nothing that was created that was not created for him. So you find that the betting of artificial intelligence, in my very simplistic mind, mm -hmm. is because of the genius of God. Because if you go to Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, it says, God breathed upon man, mm -hmm. and man became a living soul. And if you read it in the Amplified Translation, I'd like to read Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. It'll probably show you something that you had never seen before. I used it a lot in my book, DNA. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was writing DNA, it was important that I understood what God was doing. Genesis 1, 26 and 27. Mm -hmm. In the Amplified Classic, it says, God said, let us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, make mankind in our image mm -hmm. after our likeness and let them have complete authority over the fish of the sea, the birds of the earth, the tame beasts, and over all the earth and over everything that creeps upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image and likeness of God, he created him. And male and female, he created them. In verse 28, it says, and God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth, subdue, subdue it using all its vast resources mm -hmm. in the service of God and man. Mm -hmm. This is where I'm going to. So if AI mm -hmm. is part of what God gave the nod to show, mm -hmm. here is the believer's commandment. Mm -hmm. This is the um, obligation or the believer's responsibility. In embracing AI, you are embracing a part of the vast resources of the earth. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says we should use it in the service of God mm -hmm. and in the service of man. 
Yes. So if you take this technology, if it comes to you and you decide not to use it, what have you done? You've left the vast resources mm -hmm. that God has provided yeah. and you have decided to go and begin, continue to do it in your small-minded, myopic way of doing things. So technology is how the world advances. God created the humans who have mm -hmm. come to us with technology. Mm -hmm. He's increasing our resource. Mm -hmm. My job is to embrace this resource, mm -hmm. put it within ethical parameters, yes. and use it for the service of God mm -hmm. and the service of man. See, I've done my preach. Now coach can go on and do her AI thing. I, well, I think you're absolutely right. Because when we think about AI development, mm -hmm. this whole idea of this technology being developed, it truly is, and it reflects the human ingenuity, hmm. right? And the human ingenuity that's inspired by God's creative Gen genius, genius yes. and innovation. And when we think about those words, creative genius, we're co-creators with God, yes. right? Now, I can't speak for everyone, but we're speaking for believers today mm -hmm. that as this technology comes forward and what our part is, it is so that we can really be tasked to steward whatever creations God gives us. Mm -hmm. The way I see it is that just like you said, these vast resources. And when I think about uh, what I have been able to do in the last, really not the last two years, but I've been engaged with AI for the last six years. But when I think about my capacity to produce and to think and to enlarge my thinking and to solve problems, you know, that's what the tool is for. And I think it's been given to the general population so that we all can evolve yes. and really become even better at solving the world's problems yes. that are going to impact humanity. Yes. And so when we think about being made in God's image, it really means that we have this capacity for creativity and for innovation. And when I think about that process, it doesn't change the process by which we get an idea, Yes, right? God mm -hmm. still inspires us. He breathes into us a thought. We take that thought, and then we take it to the next level through our thinking. But now we have a tool that has such a vast resource of knowledge that we can simply ask a question. And so I think this just extends our genius and our ability really to solve the problems, to improve the lives of people around us, to improve our own lives, to grow our businesses, to start our businesses, to drive ideas. And I believe that when people start to embrace that, we're going to solve, I mean, just incredible, incredible opportunities. Like when we see these young people who began to, they get it. They're like, oh, I can ask a question. I remember 30 years ago, one of the young, young uh, men, he was 10 years old. We were training them on how to think. And then we would get, once they would learn, you know, that zero to two to five seconds of now to, that how you can think and ask questions. Uh, my coach went around the room and say, what do you see for the future? And he says, I see these glasses that people have on and they're going to be looking at computers and they're going to be able to go different places. This was like 30, 35 wow. years ago. A young kid with that in, in his mind That's and thinking 3D, about 3D. that. Is that 3D? 3D? 3D well, it's glasses. augmented reality is no. what you're thinking mm. about. VR, mm -hmm. that, yes, you know, yes. the, the virtual, virtual reality. reality. And yes. then there's augmented reality. And wow. what that means is the two worlds are really coming together. Mm. So I can take an image and place it in this room. You can do that on Amazon mm. now. That's augmented where mm -hmm. when you're shopping and it say, put this chair in your room. Mm -hmm. Well, that's augmented because you're sitting there and now you got the little, the chair or the dancing, you know, you see the dancer dancing characters wow. that's augmented reality. And so I think that when we're thinking about this and how we as believers, and I'm of the mindset is that your thinking is going to separate you. We're in the economy of questions. This is the economy. The best questions you ask, the best opportunities you're going to get, the best information you're going to, to produce. Now, you know, I teach these classes, right? I teach individuals how to onboard this AI. And I can tell you this, 
what I experience, and this is my eldest, um, I think the eldest person that I've taught is maybe 70 years old. And let me tell you, I've taught people, individuals that have been in their career for 25 years. They get laid off, COVID laid off a lot of people. And they're, they don't even know how to re-enter the market. They don't know how to do a resume. They don't know how to come up to speed. Well, now we have tools. And the things they say to me, though, I don't have to ask anybody. Wow. Now, you got to understand what I just said. Most of us don't cross the gap of execution because we feel like we need to ask somebody, how do you do this? Now we have a tool to say, how do you make, how, how can you create a t-shirt and a, a, a sticker or an emblem for a t-shirt business? You, you're not only going to get the how to do the t-shirt, you're going to get how to start the business. Who do you need to talk to? Where do you need to go? What other tools are available? And, and you can get it to brainstorm with you. That's where the creative genius of God is required of you, is to think about these things. And we had an event here, um, and one of the young people came out right away. I want to create stickers, and the future is bright. And then we saw it. So that's what this technology does. Please don't go away because I think that we need to go on a break. When we come back, we're going to be drilling a bit deeper into mm -hmm. this, that it is the genius of God. So we have to maintain our link your with connection. God. Your Yeah, your connection mm -hmm. so that we can begin to continue to get the downloads. That's and then the AI, blueprints and the ideas. And then AI enhances our execution. And I'll give oh, a couple wow. of examples when we mm -hmm. come back in some So terms. please don't go away. It's still the nevertheless show. We're yes. still talking all things artificial intelligence, alpha intelligence fusion. And we're saying, how do you as a believer navigate your way in this maze of artificial intelligence when you think that, oh, you shouldn't, or maybe it's too difficult for you to see? What we're trying to do is bring this information to you in the most simplistic ways that we can to give you the comfort you need to bravely step into this opportunity and this world that is opening unto us. Please don't go away. We'll soon be back. God bless you. Are you seeking to clarify your purpose and profit from it? Then get into Purpose University this year. It's a 10-week e-course for people of faith who seek to clarify their purpose and profit from it. The DNA of purpose has been put together to help you understand what purpose is about and also help you discover what your journey of purpose looks like. Register today at yourpurposeu.org where Bidemi McMordy would hold your hands so you can discover your purpose and live a more powerful life. In a world filled with many fears and discouragement, life often becomes a burden. For those who know the way, life is just simple. Do not worry, you're not alone on this life's journey, as Bidemi McMordy shares powerful insights and principles from her everyday work and life experiences in her book, Nevertheless. Nevertheless is a book designed to encourage and equip you to face life with courage, hope, and determination. Get a copy of Nevertheless and other books written by Bidemi McMordy, like The Wisdom of the Seed, Honor, The Theology of Work, and so much more from a bookstore nearby, or call 080-905-63555 or send an email to bidemi at bidemimacmordy.com to place your order. I guarantee you, you will make it. Nevertheless. Welcome back. It's still the episode three of the AI AI Fusion series of the Nevertheless Show, Artificial Intelligence, Alpha Intelligence Fusion. How do you take this new thing that is opening up to us on the earth as a person of faith and use it to enhance the call 
of God in your life and do the stupendous things that God has called you to do. I still have in the studio coach Anna McCoy. In this particular episode, we're looking at the genius of God. And what God said is that the ingenuity, the hum human ingenuity is a reflection of the, hum of the genius of God. Absolutely. And AI is a reflection mm -hmm. of, of the of human ingenuity. Human capacity. Yes. So Absolutely. it is the it is the fact that we have been endowed that brings us to the place where these things are manifesting in our word. I thought through a scripture and I found a scripture in Proverbs chapter 8, verse 12. It says, I wisdom dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. I wisdom dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. Yes. You know, God's, you know, when we talk about blueprints, visions, mm -hmm. and ideas, mm -hmm. you know, before we went on the break, we talked about keeping our connection with the mm -hmm. source. God is our source and he's the one that's bringing all of these things to us. Mm -hmm. The point is that these things would not exist if God did not release them mm -hmm. because the grace for witty inventions and ideas mm -hmm. come from him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when someone sat down and thought this through and said, perhaps we can draw this body of knowledge mm -hmm. together to better serve mankind, mm -hmm. he didn't get it from the devil. The devil never does anything that enhances us. Everything he does, the Bible says his ministry is to kill, to steal and destroy. Mm -hmm. Many years ago, coach, you remember in 2012, I had to have surgery mm -hmm. and it was my gallbladder that mm -hmm. I ultimately, when I ran the test, they said the God my gallbladder had packed up and they had to take it out. And because it had packed up and it wasn't working for a bit of time, my other vital organs mm -hmm. had become enlarged because of fatty tissue. Mm. So we had to, I had to have this surgery done. And I remember that my big fear was, are you going to cut me open? Right. That's Only right. for the doctors to say to me, oh, we're going to have laparoscopic surgery. Mm -hmm. That there would be no, um, nobody's going to be opening me up. Instead, they're going to perform, you know, drill holes or, you know, they call them keyholes. Mm -hmm. And then they will insert the scope or the camera. Mm -hmm. And then based on that, the doctor would, uh, would, would tell, guide yeah, the guide the robotic or... arm. Mm -hmm to do, to carry out the surgery. And that was what was done. I remember that after they took out the gallbladder, they spent over almost two hours just cleaning out my organs, mm -hmm. you know, characterizing the fatty tissues mm -hmm. that had formed around it because I have, I, they had that video and I have mm -hmm. a video of it. Mm -hmm. The point I'm making is that that didn't happen 30 years prior to that. Mm -hmm. It is the, right. it is as knowledge increased. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. It is as knowledge increased That's right. that that was possible. Mm -hmm. We're in another season and knowledge is increasing. And the only thing that has happened is that God is moved the veil mm -hmm. so that we can speak into eternity and see what else we are capable of mm -hmm. in our future. Mm -hmm. And that's what is playing out. That's my biblical ex uh, you know, explanation for what is happening. Because I know you need the comfort. Mm -hmm. But coach will now tell us about neural networks yeah. and stuff like that. <laughs> so let's hear how. Try not to act too, <laughs> in, too interested. <laughs> We, I am interested, well, we, actually. Absolutely, you are. <laughs> but when we think about this, I want to make sure. Um, so, and I think where we are, 2020 was a crisis, right? Mm -hmm. When we think about change or when change happens, the first thing is a crisis will occur and people will change Chaos. immediately because yes. they have no other reason, mm -hmm. no, no other way out. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. they change because of the crisis and 2020 was our crisis. Mm -hmm. Now we're evolving. Right. That's the second level of change is to evolve when you start to see things are changing around you. For example, we have digital cameras here mm -hmm. that can use Wi-Fi. They can connect. They can do things versus 35 millimeter film. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't care how much you like 35 millimeter film. You're not using it because it what evolved then immediately there is a third in that third is visionary change. Mm -hmm. Now the same people who founded the digital camera was Kodak. Hmm. They were the, they found the original digital camera. Eastman Kodak was a huge company. 
But when their guy came in, I believe in the 70s, and he presented this to him, the boss or the CEO at that time said, who's going to want a digital picture? Hmm. People want pictures they can walk around with. Hmm. Well, what happened to Eastman Kodak? They did not what? Change. And they didn't have a vision for change. And so when we think about AI, it's going to happen, people, either you're going to get in it like you on Zoom or other meeting platforms because of the crisis. Some of us are now evolving into it using these tools like Chat, GPT, Copilot, and now AI Meta and various things. And then there will be others that will use this technology because they have vision for the future that they can meet. Like they have the ability to connect the bridge to say, now we can do it. And this is where, as believers, you have to begin to seek God for those blueprints. And so what I want to do is I want to just share these four terms with you that, that hopefully it'll, it'll help to unlock and remove this whole idea of the, oh, it's just too much because it's not. Um, and so when we think about the divine inspiration and how AI and technology is often <laughs> reflected or emulated, right? The first one, and we talked about this, is neural networks, where we talked about peeling the orange. You'll have to go back and listen. I think it was maybe episode uh, one. Episode one. Mm -hmm. But I want you to think about neural networks from the perspective. That's what AI can do. But what you can do and how it's connected to you, it is just a reflection of the complexity, complexity in the design of your human brain. If you took your brain that can process billions of bytes of information, now we have machines that can emulate the human brain. We call them neural networks. The next one is machine learning. Understand it's exactly what it says. It's a machine that's doing what? Mm -hmm. Learning. So it emulates the process of how we acquire Brand knowledge. knowledge. Yes. And it's akin to how we grow mm -hmm. and how we learn. Just again, go back to that peeling of the orange. Mm -hmm. Automation. Mm -hmm. Again, this is another key and critical benefit, really, of AI, Mustard. is that it enhances our human capabilities, mm -hmm. well, which allows us really to focus on other higher order tasks. Wow. Anything that is that we can do repetitively, like mm. your emails, right? Mm. You can schedule an email. You don't have to just send it. Well, when you schedule it, or you can sort emails. All of that's the AI behind the scenes. You don't have to do that. It does it for you. It'll put promotions, mm. spam. Mm. It'll do that and sort those things because you don't need to figure it out. And then finally, that word creative AI, you're going to start to hear that. You hear creatives, but you'll hear this word creative AI, which is very similar to uh, that reflects this God given creative spirit that each one of us have. Mm. And so that's where this natural language is going to start to come in. This is where the digital images, the sounds where now AI can speak, you can have a conversation with it. It's where when you pull all these things together, it gives us an opportunity to interact in a natural way. So if you just think about that, it's not so scary anymore mm -hmm. because it's learned it, you know, mm -hmm. it'll help you automate things that you just don't have to do so that I believe spiritually in this next season, there's going to be a greater demand on the mindset of human beings. Mm -hmm. We've spent over the last maybe two decades out there somewhere doing a lot of things and being entertained. But when all of this stuff is removed and you have more time to give more thought to what's being put in you and th that creative genius is going to start to come forth. And I think that's a, a, a spiritual demand because we've been unconscious for the last two decades with social media. And some of us are going to have to just stop. Like not necessarily, you, you're going to have to become more disciplined in your thoughts and in your behavior so that you can tap into the prudence yes. that is necessary to attain the witty inventions, the witty ideas that God wants to pour his spirit into you. And that spirit is the spirit of hope. Because when you look around the world or you look at your navels, you, you don't even have to go to the world you see the hopelessness of human beings. And so when we're able to do that 
and to allow the hope of God to pour his thoughts into us, we have tools now that can help us bring it to pass. And what I'm talking about are inventions. Innovation is one thing. Innovation is taking something that exists and you may tweak it. You may give it a different way to do things, but the witty invention is to create something from nothing. It's new ideas. It's new opportunities. And so, uh, you don't have to be afraid anymore because if God gave you a dream, if he gave you an idea, all you have to do is go to the to go to one of these systems and start having the conversation and you're going to, it's just going to get better and better. And then you'll be able to get to the people that you need to get to, to bring that to form and order. That's, here's what I'm hearing, that um, AI complements our creative genius. Yes. That's what I'm hearing. So I quickly did a search yes. in my mind and I came up with um, Joel chapter 2, verse 28. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yes, afterward, I will pour out my spirit upon yes. all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your mm -hmm. old men shall dream dreams. Yes. Your young men shall, shall see visions. And they say, even upon the men servants and upon the men servants in those days, will I pour out my spirit. And I will show signs and wonders in the earth. Yes. You know, by the time you'll be begin to look at the scripture yeah. through the eye of yes. eschatology. It is yes. happening. Yeah. And it we have happening. to recognize yes, and we, it is I, I think that for me, the big thing in this particular episode mm -hmm. is that you must recognize it. Mm -hmm. You can no longer be unconscious. You know, there's a term I like to use. I call it unconscious negligence. Yes. Where it is because you said we've been unconscious for mm -hmm. two decades. Mm -hmm. That's 20 whole years have passed mm -hmm. and we just got in the zombie mode. Yeah. You know, we were being fed whatever yes. we should yes. do and we were following that mode, which means that we lost our, something I call our godliness. Yes. What makes us different from everything that mm -hmm. God has created? We lost it. Yeah. And I dare to say this, that what this means is that God is re, um, reintegrating and he's waking us up. Mm -hmm. He's giving us a run for our supernatural yeah. ability yeah. so that we wake up to see what is possible. Mm -hmm. And if you are a believer, if you don't want these things to not take you out of the way, but to be deployed yeah. against you, then it's time to wake up in your godliness and become a gatekeeper. Yeah. Because well, then you now understand that, okay, God will give me an idea. Mm -hmm. You have no excuse. This, yes. Now there are no excuses None. for not dominating. Yeah. Now, it, because what's the mandate? The, the, yeah. the, the, the apex of the mandate that we were given in Genesis 128 mm -hmm. is dominion. Yes. And I came saying to people that you don't dominate by backing orders. Mm -hmm. You dominate by results. Yes. And these are tools of That's results. Right. That's right. So that when you take these tools, you receive ideas from mm -hmm. heaven and you feed them into these tools that are available. Yes. Then your capacity for dominion is heightened. Absolutely. Oh my God. My godliness just got awakened again. <laughs> Do you see that? As we come to the end of this episode, I'm saying to you that there is a need to recognize. And when we come back in the next episode, we're going to be talking about the spirit of God. Mm -hmm. And because he is the executor of all of these things. Mm -hmm. If you want witty inventions and ideas, you need to have a system of tapping into the supernatural. Mm -hmm. And as long as you have that system and you can tap in, yes. you have no fear in coach's words mm -hmm. about how you would utilize. Because I have some ideas 20 years ago, and I just couldn't see the logical way to, uh, to bring them to fruition. Yes. Some of them I've even now forgotten. Mm -hmm. But these days, I don't need to do that anymore. If I press and I receive downloads, mm -hmm. I can engineer blueprints out of those down downloads yes. immediately. Yes. And because it's now a massive word out there, I can on my computer find people mm -hmm. who can who, who are can thinking the same and way and can deliver and bring mm -hmm. it to pass. Yes. What a word we are living in. Again, don't forget, this can be good or it can be bad. Mm -hmm. But the reason why it will be good or bad is dependent on the human that is in control. Church, we cannot be the ones that are playing catch up on this one. We have an advantage, the genius of God. And if we deploy that advantage, then 
AI will be used for more good than for harm. It's been the nevertheless show. I've enjoyed thoroughly this episode. And then we will be back next week with the final episode in this series where we'll be looking at the Spirit of God and how by the Spirit of God we can begin to execute, receive the downloads and execute it. So I'm saying AI for dominance or AI for dominion. That's what we are going to be looking at when we come next week. Remember that when you discover your purpose, you live powerful. God bless you. We'll see you next week if Jesus dies. Thank you for listening to Nevertheless. For more information and resources, call 08090563555 or send an email to bidemi at bidemimacmordy.com. Don't forget, discovering your purpose helps you live more powerfully.